Vertex welding is a form of sub-object editing that allows you to perform a couple of very specific functions. First, vertex welding allows you to control the precise placement of vertices within a model. And second, vertex welding allows you to manually reduce the number of polygons through controlling the number of vertices. And that's one of the more important applications of vertex welding. What we're going to do is we're going to look at this model. I'm going to show you some extra vertices that are not necessary and then we're going to get rid of those vertices through welding them onto other vertices. First thing we need to do is we need to add an edit mesh modifier to our model which I've done here. We're going to enter vertex subobject mode and we're going to focus in on some vertices in here in the front of our model. In wireframe mode, you can see that we have a series of four vertices in each major corner of the front of this model, and those are unnecessary vertices. They're unnecessary because this surface and this surface are fairly plain in nature, meaning there's not many uh, vertices on there at all. And two, uh, we really don't need to have this much detail here because we're looking for a smooth surface. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this upper row of vertices, these four vertices right here, starting with this one, this one, this one, and this one, and we're going to weld them to their neighbors down below. The first type of welding we're going to use is what we call target welding. Target welding is also called drag and drop welding, and it works just like this. First thing you do is you turn on the target weld mode so that you can begin welding. The next thing you do is you select the first vertex that you want to weld. Now the way this works is you drag the first vertex on top of the second vertex and then release the mouse button and the new vertex is, uh, the position of that first vertex is um, assumed by the location where you dropped it. So for example, I'll click this vertex and I'll drag it on top of this vertex and release it and that becomes one single new vertex. Let's go ahead and go over here and I'll zoom in a little bit so we can take a closer look. Click on this vertex, drag my mouse, release it, and that is now welded. It's very important that you watch the shape of the cursor when you're doing this type of welding because one, you want to make sure that you're on top of the right vertex, and two, if you don't actually get on top or near another vertex, you could possibly leave that the vertex that you're trying to weld somewhere out in 3D space. So I'm going to click on this vertex and watch my cursor. Notice the cursor changes, indicating it's on top of a vertex, and I release the mouse button and it's now welded. The second type of vertex welding that we're going to look at is called collapse. The collapse command is found down here on the edit geometry rollout. So what we're going to do now, uh, collapsing vertices is similar to drag and drop welding with one major exception. When you collapse two vertices, instead of one vertex assuming the position of the second, collapsing vertices places the new resulting vertex in the geographic center of the two selected vertices. So for example, we're going to start with these two vertices right here. I'm going to click on the collapse button and you'll notice that both vertices move to the midpoint of their combined selection and that's where it leaves the new vertex. So we'll do these with a collapse, we'll do these with a collapse, and we'll do these with a collapse. And there you can see that we have a new set of vertices. Essentially the same thing as drag and drop welding, but this was a collapse, ver uh, collapse vertex welding. Now I'm going to undo these for a second and I want to show you a very important thing to consider when you're, if you're going to consider using the collapse method. Remember I said that the new vertex, the resulting vertex, is left in the, in the middle. If I were to do all four of these vertices, the resulting vertex would then be somewhere right about here in the middle. So I'll go ahead and click on collapse and you can see, sure enough, there it goes. So you want to be judicious and careful about making decisions about using collapse. It can be very useful, but you just have to realize that if you uh, choose to use collapse, it's going to move the position of all of the vertices. 
The other thing you have to be very, very careful about is the use of ignore back facing when you're either doing target welding or collapse. And that is because it's very easy to accidentally select a vertex on the back side of the model. For example, if I were to go in and want to collapse these two vertices here, and I drag a large marquee, you can see I've selected this vertex here. Now it looks as though I've selected two vertices, but if I look over here on the command panel, I can see that there are actually five vertices selected. Where are they? They're over here on the back side of the model. If I were to choose collapse at this point, I would do serious damage to my model. And frankly, there's just no easy way to fix that. Uh, that is a major catastrophic uh, problem with your model.